Look at everyone enjoying the time in our little restaurant. I love our little elephant restaurant and that's quite the queue. I've got to be honest, I'm not sure I'd queue up in, like, what's that, four at a time? People normally queue in single file, but you know, you guys, you guys do whatever you want to, I guess. Um, it's doing quite well with this little guest area, which is, which is nice. And you know, you've got a great little view of the elephants. Look how cute they are. Oh, and the little baby. Look at the little baby running around. I think it's actually time we name our elephants because these little guys are running around without any names. So I think there was a really cute name someone suggested for a baby. I'm going to name this one Cupcake. And then I think our male should be the highly requested Dumbo. Look at them. And he's got the biggest ears out of everyone, so it makes sense. Though he is much, much larger than everyone else. But hey, don't read too much into it, okay? Then this elephant is going to be called Ivy. This elephant who's running over or walking over to see what's going on is going to be called Truffle. And this elephant who's just chilling with the monkeys is going to be called Nelly. But who could forget this little one hiding behind the rocks, who is the daughter of Nelly. I think we've got to call her Ellie. See how that worked out? <laughs> and these monkeys are running to get their food. This one is going to be called Carol, who's running off of camera to go over there for some food. This inquisitive one studying the frozen block of fruit is going to be Miss Marple. One of these monkeys chilling by the lake is going to be called Snorlax. And this other monkey is going to be called Scooby. You can't decide whether they're standing up or sitting down. <laughs> oh no, Nia's died. Oh, I don't think we even named her. That's sad. We need to check up on the dogs to see how many they've got. Um, I think their numbers might be dwindling. Yeah, well, we've got, they're okay. We've just got some elderly infertile ones. So we're gonna need, oh, we've got, we've got a new male. And is he related to, uh, I think he's related to the other young ones. So I think we should probably release him into the wild if we can. Yeah. Um, let's go have a look and see. So this male we have is related to the two other fertile females who are younger. So it's probably a good idea that we release him into the wild and then we get a new young fertile male. So there are a few in here. I think we should probably just go. They're both the same age. Let's just get the better one. It's four years old. Um, which I don't think is too old for these guys. And we'll just send him into quarantine and we can have a new a new male up and running very soon uh, for the breeding program. I think there's probably yeah this elderly male is going to be the alpha but he's going to he's going to pass away sadly soon. So uh we're not going to do anything with him. In fact, it, oh it just says you rehome. Oh, I didn't even realize that was a feature. When they get elderly, you can't um you can't release it. That must be for some species. I swear, I've never seen that before. Please let me know in the comments if it's like for all species or if it's just like, I guess, some that are easier to to transfer elsewhere. Like, I don't know whether it means rehome like to individual people's houses, because I still think that you probably shouldn't have African wild dogs as pets. But he is old and he's very cute. And, you know, he he may he may kill you, but that's not his fault. It's, that's, that's what he does. I have no idea what I'm saying anymore. Right, I think we have some alerts. So, we've got a facility without power. That's probably because our solar panels need sorting out. They definitely do because they're only on every year. I'm going to do it every three months, um, which I thought I'd got most of these, but I must have missed these, which is why. So let's call the mechanic too. And I think our mechanics are doing a much better job now because I haven't had many of these alerts uh, in a while other than this one. And the tool has been waiting for a while. Uh, I don't really care that much. Um, we can have a look at uh, our education. Let's see, I think our educators are kind of, um, we have so many keepers now. Um, I think they're kind of stretched as far as this tour. Um, let's have a look. Oh, they're doing fine. So it's probably okay. We could maybe get another one, but I'm not that, I'm not that bothered about it. I do think it might be a good idea 
to um, seeing as some of these keepers still have a high workload, it might be a good idea to just get another couple of keepers and just put them on the zoo work zone so they can kind of just go to wherever they need to. Um, a suggestion from someone in the comments is a really good idea. Um, so I'm just going to add a couple of keepers and just whack them on zoo. And then if any of the keepers are a bit like overloaded, they can use one of these like freelance <laughs> keepers who don't have any specific assigned work zones and they can go and help them out. Oh, look at the little babies in. They've got the little taper here and the little baby wildebeest. Oh, he's going to fight his dad when he gets older. That's that's what we have to look out for. How old are you? Is this... Oh, it's Mooney. Okay, that's all fine. Just always checking out for taper babies because you know what they get like. Our lemurs still need feeding. I think this might have something to do with the staff area. I'm going to have a look. Um, I believe, if we go work zones, Africa middle, where are your facilities? Ah, they're here. So it's not actually too bad. They've got a keeper and a staff area right there. It should be pretty easy to do that. So I'm not really sure why they're struggling. Um, it's a bit concerning because they have keepers who are always there. Though it always feels like every time they're hungry, the keeper's literally feeding them as we speak. I'm not sure if they are this time. Um, look at them. They're sat on there. Living their best life on the little platform we made for them. Might have to keep an eye on it. I'm going to request the keepers. Um, oh, there. Yeah, see, they're probably feeding them now. Is that for them? No, that's for the dogs. I was going to say, that looked like meat. Oh, maybe this one, though. Yeah, this one's got the food. So, you know, they're, they're not that far behind. I think maybe they're just catching up. And our lemurs are quite demanding. <laughs> they're always fine, though. I'm not too worried about it. So, we do need... Oh, look at our horses. Look at them all playing. Having a great time. Oh, they've really demolished that uh, that scarecrow feeder. I, uh, I think it's probably time that we get the animals for the current episode. And we are continuing around this corner from our elephant habitat and our monkey habitat. And we're going to use this cave. And, oh, okay. Uh, I thought the cave was a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> That's kind of just like a belly button of a cave. But... It's something. We can push it in a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm not sure whether they really use caves, but as you've seen from the thumbnail, the animal for this episode is going to be the Siberian tiger, which are incredibly expensive, but we've got the cash, or the credits in this case, and we can get a nice one. Oh, wow, look at these. Got a white, white coat. Oh, wow. It'd be really cool if we had like a white coat and uh, an orange coat and we could... We could like cross over. In fact, these two look pretty good. Let's just uh, have a look at Siberian tigers and see how long they live. So Siberian tigers are endangered. Um, they live for 18 years. So actually those two are amazing because they were like, yeah, four years old. I might actually get these two right here. Well, there is there a cheaper? Oh wow, some of them are really cheap. 310, what's, what's wrong with this one? <laughs> Oh, they're eight, but that's not that old. Okay, so we have actually another female here that's only 500. She's only four years old still, and she's pretty good. So I think I'm going to get her. And we do have some good males in here that we can afford. But I think, seen as the cheapest male, or this one's the cheapest male, isn't that much cheaper than one of these, like, leucistic, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm 100% not pronouncing that right, um, one of these leucistic males, which basically have the white pigmentation, like Howard, um, I think we should get one of these. And I know that some people are a little bit concerned about, oh, we're breeding them when they've got, like, you know, they've got the white coat, it's not gonna help them camouflage as well in their environment, but Siberian tigers live in that environment and I don't really think that this is incredible camouflage if I'm honest. I don't think they're so bothered about camouflage. I, I don't, I'm happy to be corrected in the comments if I'm wrong but I feel like white will probably help more in this snowy environment than bright orange. So they're also confident with humans which is great but it's probably because they could eat us at uh, just by looking at us if they wanted to <laughs> scare us to death. Um, it's one male and one female and guests obviously can't enter the habitat. Oh my goodness, look how heavy they are. They're like 200 kilos. That's insane. Wow, okay. Well, we've got a breeding pair now. 
So we've got both of them in here. And then we might get some of each, like baby. We might get the orange ones, we might get white ones. I just thought it'd be cool and we could have a bit of variety. And I am going to use this area. I know that tigers need a lot of space. Um, I'm not sure how much they put on here. So they've not put that much room. And tigers need territory to prowl in. That's the thing that always makes me the saddest, actually, when I go to, go to zoos, is that the tigers normally have this tiny little habitat and they're just like pacing around because they don't really have enough territory. And we, you know, we in zoos, we can never really give them enough territory um, because there are there's limits to what you can do generally. And this is just, you know, it's just an attempt in our zoo to give them something that's it's pretty good while we while we breed them for the next generation to live back in the wild. Um, but I'm going to give them a pretty decent sized habitat, I think. So I'm going to do that now with the, the barriers. And I need to look at what grade they need of barriers. They need grade three, climb proof above three meters. So grade three means we can use wooden logs, our favorite. So I'm going to put them in now. Okay, so we've just added in the barrier. I am going to make it climb proof all the way around as well by putting in some, uh, like we've done with the monkeys section on here, we've made it climb proof. I'm going to make this climb proof on both sides and then I'm just going to move the climb proof all the way around the edge so the whole habitat is climb proof. Okay, so now we have climb proof the whole way around the habitat. Um, it's actually technically suitable for them at this point. Oh, that's so weird. We're not going to have that. <laughs> let's let's make this a null post. And then we could maybe put some rocks in or something up there to cover that up a bit later. So it looks a bit more normal. But this is quite a large habitat we've got here now. Um, it's Wow, it's, it's huge. But yeah, I think that's good for our uh, tigers. And we're going to have a little bit of... Um, a little bit of water in here as well, which I don't think they actually need anyway, just so they can they can drink, but they don't need any water area, so that's going to take away from it too. I want to give them a good amount of space. Um, we've also had some... Oh no, Sizable Samuel died. Oh, what a legend of the zoo. Oh, bless him. Have you... Wow, look at all the fish. Who's hoarding the fish? Wow, look at you. Goodness, is everyone all right in here? We are just missing a male now. Okay, well, we need to get a new male. We've got, everyone's past their quarantine. So I'm gonna move the water buffalo into their habitat, which is here. And then move the wild dog into their habitat, which is here. And if I click play, then everyone can start moving. And we should probably get a new giant otter for the habitat. We've had many an otter in this habitat. So probably a nice cheaper one would be good. Yeah, we don't need them to be crazy, um, crazy good. I think this one's probably fine. It's only four years old. We've got some young ones, but that's not... Ooh, don't I... Ooh this one's only 2.5. We're going to get this one, I think, for 200 because he's only two years old. Um, so get him, send him to quarantine along with our tigers. And then, oh, look at them running. <laughs> like running with a dog in a box. <laughs> and those guys with buffaloes. <laughs> I love this game, it's so weird. <laughs> We're gonna dismiss the alert for this, this, this uh, tour, cause I don't really, it's fine. It's fine that the tour's not amazing. We can get more tours going forward and you know, we're gonna improve the education, but primarily this is a breeding program. Like this isn't an education program. Although the donations would greatly help, we get quite a lot of money in donations. Um, we have like a million of these scattered around the zoo, all with hundreds of dollars in them. So I think we're okay. Never say no to more money, but um, <laughs> oh, that one's not got any. That's a shame. But this one's making up for it. There you go. We're getting money. We're getting money all over the shop. Wow, look at them. What a weird diet. Is that is that rotting meat or is that... Oh, there you go. Rodents and mealworms. Well, that's not what I eat. I've got to be honest. I'm not a big fan of the old rodent and mealworm combo. Um, oh yeah, there's our adults. We've got one here and 
Kim's pregnant again. Kim and Gummy. Love it. They're doing us proud. We've also got our staff area just here, so it's really not far to get to the uh, the habitat we've just built. And this is going to be the Siberian tiger habitat. So, oh no, about to inbreed. No, stop, stop, stop. I need to have like a an about to inbreed stop like horn that goes off. <laughs> right, who's who's to blame here? Who's who's supposed to be our male? Oh, we got this is the lechwe. How many males have we got? got top man harold in here he's supposed to be our breeding male so this just means that you doweshi are a little bit old for this zoo and you need to stretch your legs spread your wings and fly away into the uh you know the wild <laughs> as is the purpose of the zoo right who's who's how many kids have you got because let's be honest it's is this a child of top man harold i imagine it is no it was terry oh that's not good I think they were related. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna move past that. That's fine. Okay, so actually, Top Man Harold's pretty good. Not related to anyone. Um, how many have we got? More than one male. Oh no, we're waiting for Bramble to die, aren't we? Kind of morbidly. Bless him. Look at him. Barely able to walk now. He's got a weird white glow around him. Let's get rid of that. He's barely able to walk. The old boy. He served us so well, though. Good old Bramble. When he does go, though, we've got lots of females to breed again. And uh, we can we can do him proud. We do also need to get a uh, like a memorial for all our animals. But I think I might do this right near the end of the series, so we can have like a really nice thing. That's oh maybe this could be incorporated. This could be like the start or something. It could be around here. Maybe this area should be like the memorial area. We can have like a whole area for all the animals that have died, and we can have little statues in there. It's gonna be like really cute. Oh, otters past quarantine. Let's move you in. We're going to need to come up with a name for you as well. We have loads of suggestions. It's going to be something along the... Uh, something to do with your size. And then, <laughs> or there's it's alliteration, isn't it? But normally to do with their size as well. And then their name. Done some more research for the brown bears. Have we had more stuff for them now? We probably have. We've got more toys. Because there's been quite a lot. We had quite a lot to start with. So I wasn't really sure. Look at their waterfall. I wasn't, I wasn't really sure whether it was uh, stuff we already had or not. I think we probably got it all. Oh no, we haven't got a fire hose ball anywhere. Let's add that in. There you go. That's cool. Just enrichment. I think we've got everything else though already in here. Yeah. But you know, fire, fire hose ball's cool. Uh, water treatment requires repair every month. Yeah. You can't really do more than that. You just need to get out here to actually fix it. I hope our mechanics are doing all right. They were doing really well for a while, and I feel like now they've, they're have they going back. Let's just make sure everyone's trained up and pretend it didn't happen and move on. Ah, oh, Taco's died. Oh, some of our old lemurs are passed away now. Oh, bless you, will be missed. Let's move both of our tigers, very exciting, into their new, definitely not suitable for them, habitat and make sure this is actually going to be reasonable. We're going to need to get some coolers in here to make it snowy, um, but we can definitely do that. What do you got we got for the Komodos? More food on level three, more toys. I think they needed more food enrichment though, not toys. So yes, can you get some more food enrichment, please? Oh, this is the dolls. This isn't the Komodo dragons. I think they were lacking food. Yeah, food enrichment. We've got enough toys. We've showered them with toys. How are our dolls doing? They didn't get enough of a spotlight in the last episode just because of how the recording went. How are you guys doing? You've already got babies, which is great. They could do with a bit more food enrichment as well and a bit and a bit better nutrition, but that comes with uh, upgrading the vet research to have better um, food. So I think we should upgrade the uh, Komodo dragons now they've got food level three. Let's give them that. I do periodically go through and just kind of check that we're on the top food for everyone. But I think we've done a pretty good job as of late. Oh, there we go. There's one there. Um, the only ones I could think might be pangolins. Yeah. Um, so they, they've had a bit more done lately. But as we go, we'll keep upgrading them. But I think they're pretty good. It tells you how often you need to feed them as well, which is crazy. All the horses are a bit hungry. Horses need feeding. I think they're on this work zone. So I think that was one that was struggling, but it should be getting help from our keepers. And that's only going to get better as we... Yeah. Oh no, it's Africa entrance and Africa middle. Africa area is really struggling lately. 
Um, I hope they're okay. I don't know if it's because we've got so many penguins here. It could just be that we keep increasing the load of penguins. But look how many babies we have. It's insane. I think we'll just sell, not sell, we'll re release a number of them again. We've got quite a few old ones that are going to die. Let's just release some of them though, some of the young adults, and get some more conservation credits and kind of lower the strain on our keepers of having so many penguins. Because we don't need this many penguins. It's a bit ridiculous. There you go, 670 credits. And another 856. <laughs> and a final 389. Let's go with that. That's good enough for now. We'll get rid of quite a few of them now. We lowered the numbers. We just have a lot of babies as well. Like once all the, look how many babies that is. It's insane. Once they grow up, we'll be able to release them and we'll have a, a lot. A lot more credits and a lot less strain on our keepers. Look how many keepers it takes just to keep an eye on everyone. There's two of them in here right now. It's insane. <laughs> but they're having a good time. Also, how are our hippos? We haven't checked up on our hippos in ages. That is food. That is not hippos. Oh my goodness. This is what happens when you don't check up on them in ages. Right. We've got a new female. That's great. Oh, look how many babies we have. This is amazing. How is everyone though? Are they doing okay? You doing okay guys? Um, moderate, yeah. Okay, I think you've got too many females. I think that's the problem. How many are you supposed to have? Oh, that's not spelled right. Pig, me, hippo. You're supposed to have one male and up to three females. Yeah, you've... Oh no, you've got that. That's, that's the maximum. You're just maybe lacking a little bit of space now. Yeah, you could do with a bit more swimming area for this many. Okay, well, I think we can probably fix that. Let's just do a little bit of habitat editing and make your swimming area just a little bit larger. Okay, that's added quite a bit more water area for them. Let's see how they feel about it. Yeah, okay, they've got enough now. And this is quite a lot that we're gonna have in here. So, and I've just done a tiny bit of terrain editing to make sure they're happy with the makeup of the terrain too, which they are. So that's brilliant. Um, oh, our, our tigers are in. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, let's have a look at our orange tiger first. How amazing are you? Wow, they're terrifying as well. They're massive. <laughs> Can imagine them ripping your face off. That's insane. And let's have a look at our our male. Oh, oh, he's running. He is running. He's a chunky boy as well, isn't he? Look at the muscle. Oh, look at them running together. They're probably running to take some shelter in the cave because it's way too hot for them out here. Um, so we do need to sort that out because it is 37 degrees and they normally live in, I'm going to guess, pretty low. <laughs> um, they normally live in what temperature? Where is it? It's habitat information, I think. Minus 4 to 28 degrees. So 28 is actually a lot higher than I thought, but we're going to bring that way down. Probably keep it around 0 to 10. We've got some vet research for the pangolins. That's good. I'm just going to leave them to carry on uh, doing their thing with the research. Um, we do need to add this to the work zone. So we're just going to quickly add it into the Asia middle work zone, um, which is these four habitats now. And that's probably how we'll leave it. And then also the zoo work zone. And now we've done that, everyone should be happy. We've got a challenge thing. I'll release 86 African penguins into the world. Wow, we've done loads. And uh, golden, prog golden poison frog rating to 4%. That's always good. So we're getting some of these. Uh, oh, okay. We've got an out. We've got two males. The the other male must have grown up. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna release you into the wild, my friend, because you're challenging your dad to a fight, and we don't really like that. And we've lost another penguin. So the elderly ones, bless them, are passing away, and uh, making you know making room in the habitat for the new ones, for the for the young'uns, the young ruffians. 
and delete these alerts. Now, what we need to do is first make the terrain the correct type for the Siberian tigers, and then we can sort out the temperature as well, because we know where we're going to want snow and things like that. Okay, I think we're probably good with that, which just makes it look like a lot of rock. But when we uh, when we put the coolers in to bring the temperature right the way down, oh, look how hot it is. When we bring the coolers in to something more like the Himalayan uh, bears habitat and the red pandas habitat, then we'll start to see what it should look like. So I'm gonna add a number of these coolers in now and make them probably zero degrees. Okay, so we now have enough coolers that are all turned on now. They're all powered. Sorry, we've got enough uh, solar panels around the habitat that the coolers are all powered. I'm just going to select all of the coolers and just shrink them into the ground. Crucially, the tigers are able to break out of these areas by jumping. So I'm just going to increase the height of the barrier in these sections so that that can't happen. Okay, now our tigers cannot escape, which is exactly what we want. We also have a bit of a floating solar panel, so I'm just going to bring that back down to earth for us. Which is much... Oh, no, it's still way too high up. Okay, so we've added quite a lot of snow now to the habitat. I think we should connect up the paths and kind of get a pathing system around. And then it's probably time to add some water into the habitat so our animals can actually drink. Okay, so we've just added in some uh, some one-way glass. I can see that the climb proof section on this part of the barrier is also at the wrong place. So I'm just gonna switch that round to be on the other side. Okay, so we've just edited the barriers so that there's one way glass the whole way around and the climb proof uh, setting is correct the whole way around too. Um, so let's just check that our tigers definitely can't get out. Now I've just made some changes. It should all be fine. So they can't escape. They've got a nice little bed in there. Um, oh, they can escape. It just hadn't updated. So they can escape here. So we need to make sure that this area of the habitat is raised very slightly um, down here. And then let's see if that works. No, okay, so they can't escape now, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. They are, they've got loads of space. Um, they are lacking enrichment and they're obviously lacking plant coverage. But other than that, we've got the basics for their habitat down. Oh no, oh, pang I think this is, is this our male? No, no, our, our, nail is, our male is Jürgen. Okay, but bless, one of our pangolins has died. But they do have a little baby to replace them. Oh, look at their little face. Oh, poor little thing. And we've lost a, a wildebeest as well. Oh, bless. Well, the herd is doing well. 
and some of them are elderly, but some of them are a bit younger as well. So, you know, it's it's the circle of life, and we will put a memorial in for this suit at some point. Power source is inaccessible. Oh yeah, okay. Oh well, firstly, that is just levitating. Um, so <laughs> let's split from the group as well, and then we can just move it down. We've got our inspectors walking through our staff area, which is uh, not okay, but there it is. <laughs> um, they're not super happy about the penguins. They've got, they're leaving the zoo, but they haven't seen a lot of the animals. So I think maybe they're looking at the animals still. I'm not sure why it's saying they're leaving. Ah, oh, Kowalski's died. Ah, oh, they were one of the original Madagascar penguins. What's this over here? This little crew eating some fish away from everyone else. Some hide and some fish away. Anyway, we need to get back to our tigers. So let's get some enrichment in for them. We've got more enrichment for Siberian tigers. And they can have climbing enrichment. So I think I might put something in. But the main ones we want to get in are things like, uh, like blood pumpkin here. So let's add this in here. Um, let's have a little fire hose ball like the bears. Got a rubbing pad. Um... Then we can get sprinkler. I think where are we going to have our water area? That's what we want to define. So we might need to have our, we might need a new water pump for this habitat. So I think I'm, I'm tempted to just put a water pump over here for now. Um, add it to this group. And have it in here and have it connected up. Oh, that's a bit weird. That's a bit better. There we go. Yes. Um, and now that can provide some clean water for our animals. Oh, we're about to inbreed. Don't want to do that. Um, let's get out of this view as well, because that's weird. <laughs> Is this because we have a new male, like a new baby male that's grown up? I think it may be. Let's have a look at the habitat. Um, let's go to the oryx. Yes, I think it may be. Who Who is this one? Well, let's just have a look at the animals. Um, stud book. Is that your parent? No, so you're one that's supposed to be. Yeah, your siblings. Okay, so this male has got to be released into the wild. Bless. Along with their brother, um, because they're the same. They're in the same boat. And look, a little baby. We've had a little baby giraffe in here. I don't think we've seen them before. They haven't got the uh, the white genes of of Howard, the the, the old pale skin, <laughs> um, Howard the pale, but they are they are still a beautiful little baby giraffe. We've got yeah. Let's just check these. I think these are siblings with everyone. Yeah. Okay. So we need to re release a few oryx into the wild, and then the last one being the last boy, who's a young adult too now. So now they're all released. We've actually got quite a few oryx in here, which is great. I mean, how many how many females is that now? That's, that's loads. I'm concerned that they're expecting offspring. I'm hoping that's not an inbred baby because <laughs> um, there were only their, their siblings in here. Our oh, granolas died. Bless. And another one of our African wild dogs I don't think we named, but they've passed as well. Oh, look. Wow. They're actually using the enrichment. I love it. They're already using it. We've just put it in. How do you feel about the enrichment? Oh, you're, you're pretty happy already. Um, we don't necessarily need climbing enrichment then, but... Oh, and they can swim in deep water. That's cool. We do need water. Um, I think if we put some water in now, let's put a sprinkler over here and then add some water in not too far away. And we can get a submarine in there as well. Oh, and a... Uh, Frozen block of fish, of course. Uh, but let's have this down here. So they've got a reason to come down here. Um, or if I take that out, we could have this be a little water area, which I may do actually. We raise this up. We could um, edit to the terrain. I think we want to put a little water area in here that's a bit deeper.
there we go. So we've put some water in. Got a little bit of a swimming area here now. We've put a little submarine in there. And we've also got an underwater fish feeder for the tigers, which is awesome. Um, I didn't actually realize they could have underwater fish feeding. So that's that's perfect. Um, so yeah, basically what happens is the keepers just walk in and then dump water on the side, um, like they do for the penguins. So uh, that's really cool. We've got a little bit of a water area here now that they can they can be seen in. We've had another animal die. Oh, Sheila's died. Poor thing. Look how many lemurs we have. Oh my goodness. These red rough lemurs are not endangered anymore. I can tell you that. Look how many there are. That's insane. They're just jumping all over the place. They're like little crickets. <laughs> I think our tigers also need some food though. So I'm gonna add in a food tray, probably around where the pumpkin is, um, just as like a main feeding area. Um, just so they've got the pumpkin, but they've also got some some normal meat on a tray. If, if there's too much that can't fit into the food enrichment. Um, they don't need any shelter because we built them. Well, we've, we've already have this lovely mountain. I'm going to shrink this cooler under the ground though, so that we can't see it. And then we've got quite a lot of snow now. So they're pretty happy with their habitat other than it's lacking in plants. And they do need a reasonable amount of plants. They need it from Asia, tiger and temperate. And seeing as we're going for quite a snowy climate, I'm tempted to just leave it with the tiger plants actually. And uh, I'll see you in a sec when we've made something a little bit nice.
Okay, I think that's pretty good. We've added a lot of trees in here now. Um, the tigers are happy with everything and they've definitely got enough coverage. They've got 50% coverage. Um, they still got a load of land area, though it's been slightly reduced. And we managed to put in a nice little waterfall for them as well into their little water uh, area. Oh, we've got, we've got buffaloes fighting, which isn't good. It's normally because there's an adult male. Yeah, there you go. He's grown up and he's taken on his dad. So we're just going to release him into the wild before he does any damage to a good old buffalo bill. Um, we're about to have baby oryx, which is good. Uh, we're continuing to breed them really nicely. So I think we also need some uh, education stuff for these for this habitat. So I'm going to put in some education facilities uh, now. I'm not super wild about this little piece of fence here. I might just move that to there. I'm assuming the tigers can't escape. Oh, that's not a tiger. Let's play and let's just check. That hasn't meant that they can jump out. No, it hasn't. They can get everywhere. That's exactly what we want them to be able to do. So that's perfect. Okay, let's add in some education facilities. Okay, now we've added all of that in, all the education in, we just need to link it up to the work zones, which I'm gonna quickly do now. And I'm just gonna quickly add in a water temp reg uh, temperature regulator, because we wanna make sure that the temperature of our water is actually correct for this habitat. Okay, I've just made the water 10 degrees for now. So that should be a nice cool temperature for them in the frozen habitat that they seem to adore. And look, there's a little bit of shelter in this cave from the rain. I can't believe it's raining so much. Though it is the tropics, so it does kind of make sense. Um, I can't even see the tigers, which suggests we put in some pretty good um, ooh, barrier status. I'm going to just make sure that this is maintained frequently enough. Let's say every six months. Um, I can't even see the tigers in here though, which suggests they've got pretty good camouflage. Oh, look at them. They're so cool. Wow, look at the little face. Just playing with his fire hose ball. How cute. And then, uh, what's our female doing? Let's check up on her. She's just prowling around, enjoying her habitat. This is her land. The colors are so beautiful, aren't they? Got the elephants in the background <laughs> making noise. <laughs> they, can, uh, they can imagine what's making the noise. Oh my goodness. I was gonna say, like imagine hunting them. Well, she's on the run. She is running, perhaps because there's food. They're both running. That normally means there's food, so maybe the maybe the keeper's been. Oh, and they're gonna they're gonna eat the blood pumpkin. How cool is that? Wow, I love it. They're so cool. Oh, another one of our pangolins has died. That's very sad. How many have we got now in this habitat? Oh, just two. Are you related to the other one in here? Yes, you are. Okay, so we're going to need some more pangolins as well. While we're here, let's get some Chinese pangolins. I'm probably going to get two. Oh, I was going to get some females. Maybe I'll just get one male. 
I'll probably leave it for now, um, actually, because I would like to get some females and then we can breed more. Um, so when there are some available, we'll get some more females for the pangolin habitat. But for now, I think this is a pretty cool little tiger habitat we got here. So I'm going to leave the episode there. If you've liked it, please do give it a like. It really does help the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.